delighted to be joined by the QPR manager, Mark Warburton. Mark, first things first, it's been a crazy season with COVID protocols, with games being on, games being off, reschedulements happen quite a lot. How do you reflect on the season so far at QPR? It's been challenging for so many in the game, Callum, but at the same time, we're privileged that our industry has carried on working when so many have been furloughed, redundant, losing jobs. So we're very lucky in, in that situation. But it has been challenging and, and presented demands to players and staff, you know, the life of which have probably never been seen before. So an unprecedented season. But as I say, with so much going on in the world, we're very fortunate in football to actually be allowed to go to work and continue with our, with our profession. And in terms of the club itself, you went on a very good run in 2021. How do you reflect on that run? Because it really did help propel you up the table. It does, but it, the, the championship is a unique league. Kind of, it really is. You hear people say that, and until you're actually in it, you don't understand what they mean by it. The, the challenge is we're playing a game every three days. You know, you, you, it's, it's a ridiculous amount of games, um, but they're all very, very challenging. Bottom will beat top, and no one blinks an eyelid. You know, if you're slightly below your best, if you're slightly fatigued, if you're missing two or three key players who injure your suspension, you know, there, there are no easy games in this league. And it really is a challenge. So you have to prepare. You know, we now go tomorrow night playing Millwall, Saturday, Reading, and it, it just never stops. It just keeps on coming. So, as I say, the, the, the fine margins are such. We were playing well before Christmas, never got the rewards. Playing the same after Christmas and you get the rewards. And as I say, it, you can move very quickly. You get a run together, four, five, six wins in a row, and the whole complexity of the table changes. One of the guys that you brought in in the January window was Charlie Austin, a proven player who scored goals for the club the last time the club were in the Premier League. Highly regarded by the fans, but how has he helped improve the squad and the forward-thinking players? Lyndon Dykes comes to mind from a Scotland perspective. How has he helped Lyndon improve his game? Personally, he's, uh, he's a proven player at the level, as you rightly say. You know, He has a, a strong affiliation with the club and its supporters, um, so he loves the club. It's a genuine passion for the club. Uh, he's a goal scorer, you know, he's, he's, uh, he comes alive in the box and, and it's, there's so much he can pass on, but his, his passion isn't just on the pitch, Callum. It, you know, it carries on into the dressing room, around the training ground, when we're away at the hotels before games. He, he gets his message across, the demand. So his arrival, coinciding with that of Stefan Johansson, captain of Norway, to come in again, you know, very experienced and proven player. These type of boys coming in, Jordi Davies from Hull, another proven Dutch player. So these these type of guys add to the quality of a Lee Wallace that we currently have, a Jeff Cameron, Albert Adoma. And the senior players have such a huge role to play. So Charlie coming in, obviously has added to that. A huge help for the likes of Lyndon Dykes, Macaulay Bond, the young striker, Charlie Kelman, really will benefit from watching him work every day in training, how he prepares for games, how he conducts himself in matches themselves. So, you know, delighted to have him on board. He's a big figure. You're a former Glasgow Rangers manager. You've always talked about your fondness for the club, even after you departed the club. So just sum up how you felt when the club sealed their 55th league title. I was delighted for so many people at the club. Still got many good friends. You know, very lucky to have some at the club in Glasgow itself. And it's just uh, fantastic for them to... They've been through so much following the club. I'm saying that very respectfully, going down the divisions and back up. The fans who have followed the club with such passion all the way down and back up again. And delighted for them to see Rangers back at the top of Scottish football. Uh, they've been, as I say, through a, an awful a long journey, a tough, tough journey, but they've been back in the club the whole time. So for the supporters, for the many friends, obviously the likes of James Tavernier, delighted for them. And I'll be a very pleased man when I see him lift that trophy. And in terms of the manager, Stephen Gerrard, he's been praised for his job both domestically in Scotland and Rangers' performance in Europe. What have you made of him from a fellow manager's perspective? I did. I'm very, very impressed with the job Stephen has done. Obviously, a world class player. And you go into a club like Glasgow Rangers, and obviously, what he knows in Liverpool have held him in good stead. But he's still, when you're on that touchline, as I'm sure Stephen will tell you, it changes uh, and the pressure being on that touchline. But I think he's done an excellent job, a magnificent job. Um, and I'm, I'm, the, the board have supported him. I've made that very clear. You know, to, to close that gap, you have to back the manager. But even when you have that back in, you've still got to use it wisely. You've got to get your message across to the players. You've got to instill your, your style of play, your philosophy, what your beliefs are in the game. So I think Stephen's done a magnificent job. He deserves enormous credit. But I'm sure he'd be the first to say, this is a first step. Now they want to keep building and keep you know, maintain that, top of the, that spot rather at the top of the Scottish game. 
And in terms of the fact that the club are unbeaten, is that something as a manager that if you were in this position, you would be trying to achieve? Or is it something that in reality isn't the be-all and end-all because the main thing is winning the title? The main thing is, of course, winning the title. That'd be the primary aim for, for Steve and the board, everyone associated with the club. But because of the media, they make you very aware of these records and the goals, you know, against, etc. So, you know, you can't help but read it, hear it on the radio. So, you know, they'd be very, very keen. It's, it'll be a fantastic achievement, I'm sure. But right now, they've got to concentrate. I'm sure Stephen, you know, Gary, Michael, etc. will be saying one game at a time. Just take it one game at a time, focus on that game, get the result, get the performance, etc. And then move on from there. And when they lift the league title, will you be watching that day if you've not got a game yourself? Yeah, I hope so, because obviously the club gets in your blood. It really does. You know, I'm, I'm born in North London. I'm a Tottenham fan my whole life. But when you're privileged to, to work at a club like, like Rangers, um, it really does get into you. And as I say, so many friends and you see what the club means to them. And, you know, it, it, you totally embrace that job. It, it swallows you up 24-7. But it's a, it's a total privilege. It's an absolute privilege. However long you're there for, it's a total privilege. And you have to, you have to try and enjoy every minute, learn from every minute. And you always have, always have that on your CV. So you should be very, very proud of that achievement. And last but not least, Mark, we've talked about QPR and the championship and the hectic nature that the schedule brings in any year, never mind this season. What are your aims between now and the end of the year? To finish as strong as we can. Um, you want to win every, you know, you go to every game preparing as best you can. Um, and you want to finish as high up the league. And you have your targets. In, in the championship, 50 points guaranteed your safety. First target. Every club will say the same. Um, next target for us, 60 beats last year's total. You know, when you go 70 points, that puts you in the top eight and things are getting interesting. You know, now we can't achieve 80, we can achieve 79. There's, there's 33 points available, Callum. So our aim has to be to hunt down every point. You want to finish as high as you can, a strong finish, get good momentum into the start of another very challenging season next year. When if you can keep the squad together you and add one or two quality replacement, you know, additions, you could be in a good place. Brilliant, Marks. Thank you for joining me on Football Pass this evening. Now, pleasure. Nice speaking to you.